And you're rolling the media day, sporting the bathrobe. Uh, was there an inspiration today? Uh, I just like doing a lot of fists, and someone told me that no one's rocked up with a robe, so I just came down. No, I just feel like mum's always told me, just for comfort, not style, but I think this does both. <laughs> Very well. Let's talk about your return. I mean, you took some time off. Can you talk about the, the, the reason that you, you took the time off? Yeah, so, put it bluntly, I took time off because... I, I'll, keep, I'll keep everything blunt, because I, I over-talk sometimes. Guys. To put it bluntly, got depression. Like, I won't talk about how it happened, it's just life, if you push things away, it's like an injury, you know, if you get an injury and you're just like, I'll just keep, I'll just keep training, limp, limp away with it, it's like mentally I had like an injury, and um, it all came to the fray kind of after Singapore because got the bonus, knocked the studio out, a lot of, like, a little bit of fame and uh, money and stuff, so I realised that I was, dr my drive for a little while to get into the UFC was what I perceived as money and fame, you know, like, what, you know, it's all oh, this career, it's like flashy, flashy, I want that, but um, it brought to fray that uh, I felt empty afterwards, I wasn't actually happy, and then I had to go back home, I had to go back home to Marae Nui Napier to reconnect with my family, uh, to reconnect with Te Ao Māori, like the Māori world, and that really rooted me back to the real reasons why I started fighting, which was to basically get to this platform and spread a positive message and uh, yeah, that's what it is. I was gonna ask, I mean, I don't wanna push too much, but I mean, yeah. I think that could be educational for people. I mean, here you are, you're on top of the world, right? I yeah. mean, a win, it's not after a loss, you know mm. what I mean? It's a win, it's a it bonus, huge. everything's great. I mean, you're you're one of the baddest dudes on the planet, right? And you're saying, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I'm not good, I gotta take some time away. I mean, what message did you take out of that the other people that maybe hear this can learn from? Yeah, I think it's just, uh, I think I was real lucky. My body brought everything, I basically started crying randomly. And I be, was like, why am I crying randomly when I have like lots of money now and lots of fame, all these things that I thought I wanted. That's why, because I thought I wanted them so much that I was willing to, you know, we risk so much out there in the cage. You're, I'm taking years off my life. At the end of my life, my, my grandkids won't be able to experience me or live, you know, they might not even see me or whatever. That's the risk that we take. And if you're just taking that for money and for people to be like, you're the man, that's messed up, man. So. It reminded me, I needed to know why I really did it and I think it just made me way more powerful and you've got to listen to that, to that, to that voice inside yourself and for me that voice was a dark voice for a period of time. That's, when I, that's why I had to take that time off. Um, yeah. When did you know, I'm good now, I'm ready, you know what, put me back in, I'm ready to go? Uh, I knew when I came back, when I came back from um, Napier and I kind of knew, it's like the first two days there, I was reconnecting with my family, seeing all these beautiful Māori kids running around, talking to the kids in the hood. I come from Marae Nui Napier, it's, it's, it's the hood, but a beautiful place. It, it's beautiful if you're from there, you know, if you're not from there, you'll be like, oh, you got to wear a bulletproof vest to go from Marae Nui, yay, ha, 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 like, that's not funny. Um, if you're from there, it's a beautiful spot, and uh, those first two days, I realised, I was like, man, this is what, this was fulfilling me, seeing these Māori kids and then saying, oh, I'm so inspired by you, bro, like, I want to do more of my life, like, I don't want to do gangs. And I'm me reciprocating that with like good yeah. what I could tell them. And I was basically at the point where I was either gonna yeah. fully commit to fighting for these guys or I was done. And I was really it was that and I had to decide. And it that, it took six weeks, but um the six weeks really was just reaffirming that this was always what I wanted. I never actually wanted to not fight. I always wanted to fight, but it was like I had to push it to that brink to really make myself believe that this is why I wanted to do it and I I found my why, and that's to promote Maori culture, spread it uh, everywhere I can, like an infection, because it's an indigenous culture, just like Aboriginal people, and it's about being more connected with the land. And I want to see that symbiotic relationship of like in, uh, traditional values mixed with like modern technology and our, you know, all the stuff we have here. There's no reason that we can't sustain this and make it better for the future for our for our kids. Yeah. Very cool. And last thing for me, I mean, knowing all this and this full circle that you come, what's the emotion going to be like on, on fight night? I mean, what's, what's the feeling going to be stepping oh, in the cage? Be, yeah, it's just going to be me. Just whatever I want to do, I just make it happen. Just visualize and execute. That's all I've been doing. I was ready. As soon as I announced it, I was like, yep, mate, sweet. I kind of already picked it out, actually. That's the funny thing. I told my coach, too, because I was looking at the sure dog things. When I knew I was ready, I was like looking at people, and I was like, he was like 70 or something, like a little bit above me. I was like, yeah, that American dude. And then, boom, they picked that fella, so I almost picked the fella, eh? So that's got to be a good thing.
And New Zealand MMA is obviously going to go through an explosion with all you guys coming out here and representing on the UFC. Yeah. But locally back home, there's not too much going on around the scene. You know, you're a former XFC champion, which yeah. is really an Australian promotion that kind of goes over there. What do you reckon that uh, needs to happen over there? Well, uh, we, Kai, myself, and Israel Cook tail end of it, we're lucky to have a few good shows on our come up, and thankfully, it made us so tough because we were just fighting other tough little nuggets like ourselves, you know, like some Kiwis are almost too tough for their own good. You see with the brother Daniel Hooker, Ed Zimbabwe, we got so much heart and will uh, that we can show. But uh, I think what needs to happen with um, New Zealand MMA is just oh, nothing. It's going to happen. You'll see, like, we'll all see it because we're just the tip of the taiha, you know, tip of the spear right now, just breaking through. This is the first one. There's three of us fighting on a UFC card. This is the first time it's like a big event. Many years come, we're still young, all of us are young, we're going to take this thing over. So, and we've got plenty of dudes in our stable ready to come to UFC. And when they come, you know, say we've got like 10 guys in the UFC now, they're going to inspire so many more kids. i got so many, i got 14, 15 year old kids coming up to me, but like, I'm going to beat you one day, I'm going to get there. I'll say, yeah boy, that's what I want to hear, you know, like that's, it's, there'll be a second wave. This is the first wave, there'll be another wave, it'll, it'll be continuous, yeah. And uh, how do you sort of contain that Maori worry spirit? We've seen it right at the end of your last fight. Mm. You know, that really come out, but staying technical at the same time. Yeah, it's, um, well, Māori have always, like, there's a, a little uh, thing, it's like, uh, my language is my strength and ornament of grace. And that, we're talking about language here, but that the culture means the same thing as well, and that, that it's an adornment of grace. It's like, I tried to, that last one obviously wasn't too graceful, like, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a balance, it's a forever process, you know, I'm never, I'm not, ever going to be a complete fighter. When you see me fighting four fights from now, I'll look totally different to this fight. And I think I'll look totally different to that last fight. So it's a, it's, yeah, it's that balance of holding in that mana that we have, that, uh, that bulldogness that we can have, but yeah, letting it come out through in a skillful way. Cool. Oh, oh, question. Actually, um, what is exactly, um, I'm not going to say it wrong, Waitangi Day? Waitangi Day. Waitangi. Yeah, so yeah, yesterday so was Waitangi Day, which was the day that the Treaty of Waitangi, a place in New Zealand, basically when uh, the British, oh, should I give you guys a little history? Go for it. So, <laughs> I can give you the one version and then the truth version. So one version <laughs> is that the, the uh, British came and colonized New Zealand, while well, earlier was the missionaries and they brought the, the, the Bible. And we, as Māori, because Māori are just people that will just let you in, we'll give you food, we'll give you the shirt off my back. Like every Māori I've ever met is like that. Even the scummy ones, like, you know, there's scummy people in every part, but they're all like that. And we as a, as a people let the missionaries in, and then following that was uh, the British colonizers. And then they, we basically had this weird trying to be a symbiotic relationship, but it wasn't working out, so they wrote a treaty. They made it in Māori and a treaty in English. The treaty in Māori said one thing, the treaty in English said a total different thing. We signed the Māori treaty, they signed the English treaty, and this has been what has happened from now on. But basically they took away a lot of our land and stuff. Like, I don't get into that because I'm half white, you know, I'm, part, I'm like colonizer and colonized. So that was that thing. But the real truth is what I'm realizing now is that what Waitangi Day was, is like they brought the Bible with us, and then while our eyes were closed and we were praying to the Lord, they took our lands away and then we opened them up. Like that's what we're left with now. But and so that you can be, you know, upset and be like, oh, if the white men, if Pakia, whatever, like, don't hang out with them. But really what we need to do is just give it love and just tell them, hey, how about you be part of our culture? Because I see it with a lot of people. They want to be inclusive into Maori culture. They see the value. They see how, like, pumped I get just going outside and enjoying nature. And they want to be part of that. Um, but yeah, back to Christian Waitangi Day. It was a day that was marred with a lot of bad stuff, uh, a lot of deception. But... I think in the future, say in 10 years, it'll be a, it'll be a total different day. We'll be talking about the, it's a true independence day of Aotearoa. Yeah. And a prediction for um, the co-main event. The important for the co-main, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see Izzy being able to do whatever he wants. Uh, no disrespect to Anderson, I love Anderson so much, but I mean whatever he wants as in not just strike. You know, he's, he's a well-rounded MMA fighter in every aspect. and. Um, I guess my prediction is seeing him put him away in a second, but I think it's going to be quite like abrupt. I don't think Anderson's going to get tired. Like a lot of people are saying, he's going to like wear him out. But I think it's just going to be quite abrupt. It's just an abrupt finish in the second round. Yeah.
Uh, a guy that you're sorry, okay. um, yeah. uh, a guy that you're very familiar with is Alexander Volkanovsky. Obviously, you debut against him. Um, have you uh, have you been watching his run, and is it something of a consolation prize given that he's right up there in the top five, possibly fighting for a title next? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like yeah, it's, it's just like puts you in the lets me know where I'm in in the mix and stuff. You look at the age gap, blah blah blah, whatever. But I've only ever lost to like the cream of the crop, really. And then the other one that. Yeah, I kind of redeemed one of my losses with a knockout, so yeah, I feel like I've only ever lost to the best of, of the division, so I'm never gonna ever lose ever again because I am the best of the division, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you so much.